So, yeah. So I love obviously what you do. You and your husband have built, obviously, I know a lot about your story um, from reading your book and I loved it. I fell in love with it because me and my relationship, we have a big entrepreneur business together that we've built actually together. Um, me and my fiance. So it really hit home to read your book. And a lot of it was really empowering. Um, I, yeah, so it was really, I, you know, it really changed my perspective in regards to relationships. So thank you for that. So because of that, I wanted to ask you too, one question for you, a big question that stood out for me was like, what inspired you and your husband to help others, to help other people? You know, it's a few things. It was um, after the economic collapse in 2008, when we were literally on the verge of losing everything at that time, we decided then we made a pact that if we made it through that um, occurrence and were to ever get to a place where we are now, where we have legitimate stats behind us, that we would not close the door or the curtain like other people in our situation do and now i million percent understand why they do that however we decided to not close the curtain because of who we are which is just these you know middle class families we're both from louisiana um you know not supposed to have been the chosen ones whatever you want to call it to reach financial stability freedom whatever you want to call it and we vowed that if we ever did hit a place that we would let others see where we went wrong, see where we went right in order to fast track other people's success. Because as we started hitting new levels, you know, I realized, you know what, sometimes at these new levels, those aren't really the people that I want to be around. Those aren't my people. My people are these people. And I want these people to be operating at the high levels together so we can be doing it together. And I feel like these, you know, our people um, with a little bit of adjustments and thinking can know and can get up there. But the people that I met up there don't want you to know those things because they like you better here. And that's where Grant and I found ourselves in, in that position, in that trap. So we did find a way out. I'm not saying it's the perfect way or it is the only way, but we did find a way out of that. And so it's our responsibility now to share that with others because that was a decision that we made as like, if we did this, we're doing this. And the other reason is, is look, when you hit a certain level of financial freedom, there's only so much that material things can provide you. And I am not a materialistic person to begin with. I like shooting my guns, running on you know, a, a field with a bunch of dudes, shooting at targets. That's something I love. I'm not materialistic. However, I like nice things in life. And those are very important and they're very nice rewards to have because they um, tell you the reinforcements of all the right decisions that you've made. So they're important. However, they don't fulfill you in the same way that you can be fulfilled by helping others. When I help others and I change the trajectory of somebody else's life because what I said made a difference and you telling me in the beginning of this podcast, you know, what you wrote in that book, meaning me, um, helped my relationship with my husband. That's a reward for me. Rewards don't only come in monetary payback. Those are rewards. And when I get enough of those, those fulfill me. That satisfies me. That's really the legacy I want to leave. People aren't going to remember me by the amount of money I had. They're going to remember me by the difference that I made. So I'm on a quest now to see how big, how powerful, how much of an influence can I, this little girl from New Orleans, Louisiana, who never went to college, what can she do? Yeah. That's the legacy I want to leave. And that's why it's so important for us to, to make a difference and to help people. Yeah. It's the only reason I leave my life so open and so exposed <laughs> for yes. people to, you know, criticize and make wrong and whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you always find things. And that's what I've noticed too. And I love that you said that because of the fact that you are very relatable and you're really open. And I think it was in an interviewer in the book, I can't remember, you said something about no matter how high I get, I'm always going to try to be 
as personable as possible. You said something around those lines. And that's something that I live for. And that's my motto too, you know? Um, the fact that you also say something about not going to college and things like that, you know, I was able to build a seven figure business with my fiance and myself and his business as well. Um, so it's beyond that. And I never went to college. I never even got to walk because of the fact that I was so bad in mathematics, you know, and that was the reason why I failed high school. <laughs> and now look what I'm doing and inspiring others and getting those emails that you help others and you're impacting others is living a legacy. And also too, like, that's really what life is about because you can have so many Chanel purses, but it has no value. You know, like look at the times that we're living in now. It literally has no value. Your message is, has the value, you know? Um, and that brings me to this, you know, I saw some things this week that people are all, it's, it's always, no matter how good you do and how inspiring you are to others, people are always going to find the fault in your relationship, in your business. I mean, I think somebody was on you and Grant for mass the other day about these 10, I'm like, how in the world are they going to be making money from $10 in mass? Like literally you're contributing back to help other people. And then also, I think I was um, watching something, one of his lives, and I think it was the PIP loan, if I'm not mistaken, he was really honest about how much he had. And like some people were giving him some backlash on like some type of group. And I was like, this is always, no matter how open you are and how vulnerable you are as a public figure and in your relationship, you're always gonna get backlash. So how could you like, for some couples that are out there, because we have a lot of viewers that also have our entrepreneurs and in the public eye, what would advice would you have for them when it comes to those moments? They're very stressful. You know, they really are. Uh, you don't have to be as transparent first and foremost as Grant and I choose to be. That is a choice. And I know that I'm going to get that. They're, they're, this is the advice that I would give them. If they choose to be that transparent and open because you have a mission so badly that you want to help others, that you're not going to let people who cannot, they do not have the capacity or the ability to come up with any products of their own. Look at their stats, look at their life. They have zero, they have nothing. They're not influencing anyone. They have no organic content of their own to provide to people. People like that, in order to fulfill themselves, their product becomes, I'm going to destroy or take somebody else down. And that's their claim to fame. That's how they're going to get famous or get known or they're doing something. I can't do anything on my own, but I can, I can ruin the reputation of the Cardones or whatever your last name is or whoever or whatever company organization. That becomes their thing. Now, you have to realize that the people that are trying to do good and make a difference for the better, if you close the curtains or you stop helping people because of what the handful, and it's really only a handful mm -hmm. compared to the amount of allegiance and support that I have received on the back end of everything. It's really only a handful. If you stop doing what you're doing, you allow the handful of people to win because their mission is to stop the efforts of good people. They don't like betterment groups. They don't like seeing other people succeed because it triggers in them the fact that they have no products to produce because they have nothing, they are nothing, they're shallow, they don't, they have no substance, and they know it. They can't lie to themselves. You can't lie to yourself. So these people are depending on their little yep, 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 yep to take giants like you and your audience here down and if you let them take you down they win so the more yap yaps i get the more determined i am to be a leader to be on the forefront am i gonna make mistakes yes is my husband gonna make mistakes yes but if you take all the good that we have done and all the time and energy and you take the fact that i don't need to do this I don't need to do this. I am set for life. Economy tanking or not, I'm going to be okay. 
We have prepared since 2008 for this very moment and people hate it. They hate it because they can't have successful people around them because of what I'm talking about. Yeah. So the people that are out there that are willing to take a stand for working, for providing for your family, for being an example, don't let the little naysayers that are going to attack you for whatever it is that you're doing, don't let them stop you. Yes, I love that. And and fortified. The more fortified I am with my husband, the more it drives them berserk because they <laughs> want under these times of stress because even though I'm going to be okay and we're going to get on the other side of this and we will be better for it, more people will hate us for it, but that is the fact. However, during these moments of stress, we do feel an impact. We did get kicked in the gut. We are not vulnerable. We, I mean, we are vulnerable. We are not like, like the category five hurricane hit. It's going to wipe some people out. I'm in a category five building. It's still going to hurt. I'm still going to feel the impact. I'm just going to have less damage, you know, at the, to clean up at the end of the day because I have fortified for the last 12 years. I have made that strong. I have prepared for this moment. And the people that are with us, we're all going to go, Chink! and that's, that's, um, that's what I have to say for those people. There's, you're not going to stop me and my vision. Yeah. Ooh, that was good. That was motivational too, for anybody that will be listening to that. That was definitely motivational. And I have you to thank for that. You know, you and your husband and your family, just putting your kids on social media as well and showing your life a little bit here and there, being vulnerable pushes also me, I can speak for me to just continue to share that message and be vulnerable with our message. And, um, you know, and I love when you guys speak truth, like it's, it can be very black and white at times and people can look at it as it's so not, you know, like so mean, but it's very forward. And that's what I love about the both of your message is you don't sugarcoat basically shit. The both of you get down to the bottom of it and you tell the truth. And that's what something that, you know, I just, I know can be stressful in work and relationships. So I say this, thank you for doing that because okay. it yeah. inspires me. You know, it's like, I'm in the trenches with my husband. We're fighting a war. We've been hit. There's been casualties. We've had to lay people off. It doesn't feel good. You know, we're now figuring out how to rehire him back. But things are, but things are stressful, you know? And we're fighting a war together. And sometimes you get angry at your teammate and you're like, you want to turn on them. But again, if you understand what the outside world is trying to do, the bad ones, the handful, it's not everybody. Yeah. But if you understand they're trying to destroy you, they want, they legitimately want you to get divorced from your husband because then it would be like, ha ha ha, they fail. And in those moments, I remind myself of that. And I find ways to even get closer to my husband and to fortify even more during the moments of strength. Mm. I use everything that they give me to become better. Ooh, yes. I love that message. Message for women that are also listening too. <laughs> so that loops me into some dating and relationship stuff. I want to ask you some questions on. Let's get to the juicy stuff. <laughs> love it so do you think a woman can inspire inspire a man and how if so oh million percent it's in my book the role of the queen i mean a million percent a woman can inspire a man i mean a woman is very powerful what's the definition of power the definition of power is the capacity or the ability to influence the behavior of others. That's power. It doesn't say CEO. It doesn't say you have to have X amount of wealth. That's power. Can you influence the behavior of others? So can a woman be powerful and influence the behavior of her husband um, for the better, for them to reach heightened success? Million, million percent. And they should. And they should, they should own that and take responsibility for being the woman in the relationship and being that powerful force. You know, men are awesome and they're great and they're very powerful. Like, I'm not discussing men, you told me to talk to women, but like, it's a mutual thing. Like, it's like the togetherness of both, which makes them both even more powerful than if they were alone. Right. And that we can go into men, I think with men too, in relationships in general. So 
you know, I, since coaching, I've coached so many men from all over the world and the place that I see a lot of, um, what I should say, I guess you can just call it resentment and arguments, right? Is if a man is on his purpose and is trying to build something, there's also something that the woman has to take back the back seat on, right? And I say the back seat because it's temporary, right? If you see a long-term relationship with this person, a lot of times women are like, I want the attention, but he's trying to balance everything. And if he's trying to build an empire, the attention is going to diminish. And then what happens typically, if the attention diminishes, we come from ego and we attack a man's ego. And I think that is the worst thing that a woman can do is actually go for an ego of a man. Because I think if an ego is in a relationship, especially if an ego is praised effectively and um, a wife or a woman behind him is actually nurturing that aspect, then he will come out and perform at his highest level with confidence in whatever way that you want him to and building an empire or being the best father that he can be at home, right? What would you say about that in regards to having to diminish that time when someone is probably building an empire? Did you have to go through that as well? Oh, yeah, a million percent. I went through that. And, and here's the, the deal. Guys or girls, whatever position you're in, but whomever is in that um, entrepreneurial kind of mind frame that was, is all about work, 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 work. Here you said the example of the guy. So let's take the guy. So he's trying to work on his thing. The mistake that the men make is not including the women. Mm. So, they, you know, so they give off the, um, the attitude that they're going to do this with or without their woman. And that's fine. No one wants a man to give up or a woman, but no one wants anyone to give up their dreams. That's like, if, if, if you're going to give up on your dreams, you're for sure going to give up on your family and me and the rest of the world. So no one's going there. But if a man did a better job of finding a way, was more creative and getting the woman involved and on the same page, if they understood that that the reason he is doing that is for X. This is who we are as a couple. If they get reunited as to what their goals are as a couple, where they're going together, what they want to represent as a couple, you see, then she doesn't feel like she's lacking in the attention. She feels like now she's participating. Now we know the roles. This is my role. I'm in charge of this. I'm going to make sure all of this runs well. You do that. And you make sure all that runs well, but we're doing it for this end goal, this end purpose. And so when she is feeling lack of attention, she's maybe not feeling so much lack of attention because she's helping. That's part of her role in assisting with this whole thing. Now, when the two of you reach the goals together and you start seeing the wins and having the rewards in the, of, the, of the work that you put into it, that's what makes people fall in love with each other more. To yes. me, it's like the greatest love that you can show someone else is helping them achieve their goals. And it is not, and it has to go both ways. It isn't a woman saying, well, a woman who has no goals, doesn't know her role in the relationship, you know, doesn't understand where they're going as a couple, well, all of a sudden, especially if she's left out, is going to go, well, pay me some attention, pay me some attention, and rightfully so. But she's not on her mission then, you understand? She's not lined up, so therefore, she's trying to demand something that he doesn't want to give, which all could be solved very easily if they just were to understand what their couple's goals are, what are the roles of each one of them based on not male or female, but based on strengths and weaknesses and coming up with a plan on how to divide and conquer? And what will the rewards be if we achieve this? Do we go on a two day or a one day vacation? Do we do the rush? What is it? You, it's, it's your relationship. You have to create what it looks like. It doesn't just happen. It's not fairy tale. You know, it's not fairy tale. It isn't happily ever after. It's happily ever created. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Yes. And a lot of times we're looking at relationships like the Hollywood story, like the movie. It has to pan out like this or what society has for us, right? What society or what our mom and dad raises us to believe of how a relationship should be. So we have all these little voices in our head that we can battle in relationships. And what would you say to a man that is wanting to build an empire and be successful 
but a woman doesn't have, maybe doesn't have a lot of goals in life or is probably doesn't know what she wants from life and is confused. Well, they need to talk about it. You know, I mean, there's different stages of, of where they're at. I mean, if they're, if they're married, they're going to have to talk. He's going to have to find what is the in, what is her thing? Is it to help her mother, her father? Is it to, is it to have money for the kids for college? Is it, what is her thing? And he has to speak to that. Well, we're doing this because we're, we want to send the kids to college. We want to do this. And how can we, you know, there just has to be multiple conversations. The guy doesn't, or the girl who, again, you know, you know, people love to pick me apart, but for the okay. sake of the example, just here in the context, I'm saying it, um, people need to, oh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Um, you laugh at me. <laughs> um, She's so cute. It's okay. It'll come back. That leads me though into something I wanted to ask you. And this was like a question that actually came in from one of my um, subscribers because he knew I was going to be interviewing you. And one of the questions were like, how do we get an Elena? So what qualities should men look for when trying to date a high quality woman? That's what I was talking about. Yes. Like, so there's different, there's different parts and it is in this book that I'm writing in my men's manual. I, I'm, you know, Part of the thing is they have to know what they're looking for. It's going to require you, like anything, to write a list of what your ideal woman looks like. What does she look like? You know, does she take care of herself? Is she ambitious? Does she have her own thing? Does she support me? Does she push me to, to be greater? Does she take care of herself? Does she do drugs? Does she not do drugs? You know, is she monogamous? You need to write that whole list of what your woman looks like so that when you see it in front of your face, you can start identifying. Write down, of course, what she looks like, but don't get so stuck in the hair color, the eye color. I couldn't see Grant for the first year because I had written on my list six two and green eyes the first two thing on my list six two and green eyes everything else I wrote over a hundred qualities of everything I wanted in a man he was every single one except six two with green eyes so you know don't get so fixated on a certain thing that you can't see what it is but how does a guy get that he gets that by writing the list of what the woman who that woman is and then he has to objectively look at what does that woman want in a man? Yeah. And he has to write the list of the man that she writes, not what he writes. And then he has to look at himself and say, where do I fall short on that? Because I guarantee you every woman's going to write monogamous. And if that guy is being playboy 24 seven, you know, and is like, oh, I'm going to not be a playboy once I find my woman. It doesn't work like that. You're yeah. never going to show up in her world. You have to be that man now. So they have to decide what is it that they want and what are they willing to give up in order to have it? So if a man wants a woman, like a real 10X woman, that's going to help him reach heightened levels of success and fast track that for him and really give 100% so he's not just operating solo, you know, because I, 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 I make this analogy of the Clydesdale horses. One Clydesdale horse can pull 8,000 pounds alone. Two together can do 24,000 pounds. Those same two horses harnessed up side by side, trained, working together in a coordinated effort can pull 32,000 pounds. Mm. So that's the power of two or more, you know, and eventually you're gonna have to get help and expand your empire and bring in partners or investors or whatever it is. But that's where it starts from the home. So for all the men looking for the woman that's going to help them reach 32,000 pounds, what are you willing to give up in order to get that? And if they look at that list and they're like, you know what? I'm happy pulling my 8,000 pounds because I need to go, you know, sleep with 10 million girls, you know, every single weekend, then they need to accept that and just keep doing normal relationships. This book and what I'm writing for is for a 10x man that's willing to really confront some things and really knows what he wants. And it's like, I want that woman. That's the type of woman I want. Now, what type of man do I need to become in order to attract her? Because he'll never show up otherwise. Yeah. 
Yeah. And there's, you already wrote a book before. It's called Build an Empire, Empire How to Have It. And I'm going to put it below in the links. And I actually jotted something down here because I wanted to read it, if you don't mind. And it has a lot to do with this. So it says, it's in regards to what we're talking about a little bit. Yes, doing the work on yourself means channeling inward and battling demons so that you're better equipped to deal with the day-to-day -day in your role as a queen or king. But I won't lie, my decision to work out, eat healthy, and take care of myself also has to do with the fact that it was, it's what I brought to the table when I first met Grant over 15 years ago. I enjoy being that sexy, smart, passionate partner that Grant couldn't live without when we were dating. It's a gift I bring to our marriage, just as he does the same for me. I really, really like that because sometimes we lose sight in a relationship. Like, what was the reason that the first reason of why you guys got together? You know, what was the first reason why you were attracted? And that is the reason why we keep on progressing in our relationships as the years go on. Because like marriage couple, married couples that I counsel sometimes, they'll be like, you know, but I lost a spark. Someone will end up cheating, you know, because communication is lacking or someone got too comfortable. And I'm a big believer, and I don't know, and please tell me what you believe, but I'm a big believer that relationships are constant work. And that is in the physical and mental aspect of relationships. Just because you're married and have kids doesn't mean you stop. Like your marriage is what comes first to flourish your relationship with your kids too. Million percent. And, you know, the, the marriage, the wedding day should be the start. That's not like the pinnacle. That's not like, oh, I'm going to look great on my wedding day, not just physically, but mentally as well. Yeah. And then just let myself go from here because now I got it all locked in. No, that should be the start of you two building greatness together. Like that's just the launching pad. That's just the bare basic foundation of as to where you're going to go is like what the end goal should be after like what do you have to show for it not yeah. oh we were so great on our wedding day mm -mm. Yeah. you know and mm -hmm. and the thing that i was saying earlier that i forgot about um i just wanted to come back to full circle yeah. about is you know some people like you know they expect you know because you asked the question what do people do for the partner that doesn't have the goals or the desires or the passions that maybe one of them does. And here's the thing, I did start off to say, you have to have the conversations and that's true. But also what's important to understand is not every relationship needs the beast. Mm -hmm. You know, if the beast needs another beast to do what they do, is that really what they need? Do you need two people doing the same thing? Or can you do that while the other one does what they do really well? operations. I don't do what Grant does. I'm not on the phones. I'm not, you know, building companies and running and talking to this person and negotiating loans and do and figuring out all that. Like that's his thing. But is he going to look at me and say, I'm a loaf because I don't do that and be upset that I, 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 I don't even have the desire to do that. No, because I am a beast at what I do. So two people can be a beast without having to be the same beast, if you know what I mean. So that's the thing I wanted to say, whereas a lot of guys in particular come to me and wanna get their wife on the same page or how do I get her motivated? And I'm like, but is she really? Is she good at what she does? Is she running behind the scenes operations so she's not putting problems on your plate? And if she is, why are you not acknowledging that? You know, why do you need her to be going to do what you do? You know, yes. And, yeah. and you know, a lot of my my women that come to me uh, are in, are in a similar position. Like I have this one woman; she's the breadwinner of the family, and the guy isn't. And which is fine, except for he's not supporting her. He's not contributing to the behind the scenes operations. And if he was, she was like, I don't care that he's not the earner. I just need him to be the support team around me. 
and, and going forward. And she wasn't getting that and you know, whatever, they ended up in divorce. However, I have another friend who he was a very successful architect. Well, she became a very well-known glass artist and he quit his architect career to go and he does everything to support the behind the scenes, all the administration. He deals with all the customers. He sets up all the, the art that needs to go on these big stands. He runs the whole show and he has no problem with her getting all the accolades and because they know they're a unit. It doesn't matter who's doing what, it's their relationship. It's the couple's goal. They're forwarding the mission of each other, not being stuck on this guy, girl, society says. Exactly. Type thing. exactly. Cause everything works differently for everybody. Wow. This is gold. So many men are going and women that are listening to this podcast are going to love what you're saying. You're helping out so many of them. It reminds me of me when you say that, like, you know, when you, I'm listening to you and I'm like, wow, so true. So I built a very big successful business. My fiance has built a very big successful business, but my strong points of my business is because of him. And, and I mean, excuse me, my weak points of my business is because of him. He knows the marketing aspect. He knows the numbers, you know, he gets, he makes fun of me because he's like, how much did you make today? I'm like, uh, five, six, seven, you know, I'm like horrible, obviously. <laughs> so he's like, I know how much you made. Like, it's okay. Like, you know, now he stops asking because he knows that's the strong point. He handles the numbers. He tells me what to do. We've got to do this. We've got to put money here. We got to do this. And then I know taking care of the household. What's my strong point? Reminding him of his appointments, staying on top of him for other things like his meetings, you know, stuff like that. And so we've been able to come together and also too, we say something in the house so much in our relationship is we constantly say, we might say this like every week and we say, we are not a normal couple, mm -mm. right? That's right. And cause sometimes in my mind, what happens to me especially like if you're building something together, you kind of sometimes get stuck in like, but we should be spending more time together. Like, are we, are, are we going to separate? And I get sometimes a little fearful because we're not doing something that society thinks is the right way of a relationship. And then we come back and we're like, but listen, we're not every normal couple. We literally have to schedule in our calendar when we get to do pool time, when we get to do family time, when we get our what, us time, you know, and it's in the calendar. And I'm like, but that's not really romantic. But then there's surprises. Like we travel, obviously we can't do it now. And then that all comes together. And I think the constant reassurance for couples is to say, we are not like every other couple. Million percent. And you know, that's the only time I've ever gotten into trouble is when I try to fit into a box of what I think everyone else does it. Everyone else is having the same problems, even if they're spontaneous. It doesn't exist. I don't believe in the fairy tale. I don't believe in the fairy tale. If I want a fairy tale, I got to create a fairy tale. And, you know, I have to schedule dates with him too. I have to, I have to contact his assistant and say, is his schedule clear on this day for the, our daughter's birthday party at this time? <laughs> Because, because that's just our life, but we are not normal. And we have all the other benefits and rewards in different areas. That's what works for us. It's of us. It's not because everyone else is probably doing it a lot worse than you. Yes. So true. Wow. Thank you for that. I remember a long time ago when he was traveling in Paris to do speeches. I didn't see him for three months. And I literally asked myself, I'm sure Elena has been through this same position with Grant and not seeing each other. So what would she have done? And I just told myself, just keep on, just promote it. Like be so happy that he's doing this. He's inspiring people, you know, um, because it's also hard when, you know, and you mentioned this in your book, when you have friendships, Sometimes the friendships stay there and you continue to kind of grow and it's different. Like the conversations when you grow and you reach an amount of a level of what you think you couldn't have because I came from Oakland, California in a 20 raised in a $40,000 home and now having a hundred thousand dollars come in the bank easily is like, whoa, like this is crazy, you know, and the, and it, money doesn't feel like it does to other people when you don't come from it. Like it's a, I think it's a totally different aspect. It doesn't, it's not like, oh yes, I'm wealthy, blah, 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 and you get so like egotistical about it. You know, it's like, it's no attachment because you never had an attachment to in the first place. And so I say that because, you know, a lot of times I've gone back and I'm like, 
who else is in my situation? And I really didn't have someone back then in my circle. And it's a little bit now I do, but in my circle back then when I was growing and I was just like, all right, well, Elena Cardone is basically someone that I've inspired that is having somewhat of a same relationship like me. So I'd always constantly remind myself, what would she do? What is her message? How did she get here? How does she stay so strong? And I think also too, you said something on a, I don't know where it was, but you were just like, you know, the reason why I do what I do and I take time from my own marriage, like I take time from my own marriage and from being selfish, I don't, I'm not selfish because I know Grant is giving to others and that's the reward. And so that always stuck with me. So thank you. Oh, wow. That is awesome. You know, and that is true. You know, a lot of, a lot of the behind the scenes people don't really get acknowledged um, for the role that they do. Like our military families, you know, they're separated from their loved ones months, nine months, a year at a time. And, um, you know, everyone calls the military the heroes and they are. But I also say those military families are, sometimes you can even challenge, maybe they're even the bigger heroes because it takes a lot to divide and conquer and to protect the fort at home and to make it okay for the other person to go out and do their job. It's a very selfless act when people do that for the greater good for the for the role i mean you know and and if they've got a hero who's out fighting to protect our company and our company our our country and you know protect our liberties and freedoms you know um that that is such a noble cause and the families that support those type of people so that they can protect people like me it's like you know i bow to them i i respect that and so yeah it is it is something that helps me get through life like okay so you know you had to do three months in order to get y'all that's a sacrifice phase in order to get y'all where you need to be and the way that you approached it in promoting it and um, acknowledging it and holding down the fort and dividing and conquering, that's all going to make y'all stronger. He will always know that you had his back during that time. And I think that's what a lot of men want. They, uh, Men, women, anyone who doesn't want someone that's going to have their back through thick and thin and support them. Everyone wants ride or die. It's easy to say ride or die, but when you're in the shoes and you're riding or dying, it's like, that's another thing. And, and you'll, yep. never, he'll, you'll never be able to take that away from him of what he knows about you. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's, that's so beautiful, Elena. <laughs> so he, I wanna wrap up. He knows uh, too, believe me. Oh, he does, he's not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> um, so what, I want to wrap it up with the last question too, in regards to this, it's what we're talking about a little bit too. So it's perfect timing. Do you think that butterflies can always last in long-term relationships or marriages? Butterflies? What do you mean? By yeah. That? Like that butterfly feeling, you know, like a lot of people want that, like adrenaline, the endorphin rush, the dopamine rush, right? Like, do you feel like, do you think that that can last the whole time? No, no, I think those are created moments. And, you know, and, um, you know, there's definitely, no, the whole time, no, I'm in the trenches. I'm fighting next to this guy. I don't have butterflies when I'm trying to <laughs> pull off enemies. I'm, I'm, I'm angry. I'm like, why'd you run out of ammo? Take this mag, da, 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 what the <laughs> hell, you know? Da, 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 da. And, and I'm not thinking about even being attracted to him in that moment. But when that subsides and, you know, we come out and, you know, I can stick the American flag in, in the ground and be like, we won. Then I can turn to him and like have the butterflies and the jump on top of him. I'm so excited. I love you so much. And we won. Woo, you know? No. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So there's, there's ebbs and there's flows and there's, but it's always your responsibility to create it. And if it's gone too long where you don't have the butterflies, then shame on you, be the responsible one. How can you put it into the relationship? How can you create romance or intimacy or whatever you're lacking? It doesn't, it's not going to be 24 seven. You're not going to be lovey dovey 24 seven. You, we've got work to do. We have mm -hmm. lives to impinge upon. We have people to help. Help. It's not just us greedily. Oh, we're so in love 24 seven. It's the way you feel. I need happy, 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 happy. Like, like that's not real. If it is, that's not real for me. 
No, yeah, that's not real because it's a constant chase. Like you're always going to be chasing for something and you're always going to be losing. So it's, it's just, you can't do that. Yeah. All right. Well, I definitely, something else did come to mind. I wanted to end it with something that you would suggest for the men that are listening. And maybe for you or maybe for friends that you've heard that may possibly are single or anything like that is what do you think the most attractive quality Maybe if you can name two qualities a man can bring to the table. What do you think that is? Um, wow. The, the sense of, you know, commitment. Um, I mean, there's so many. Commitment, honor, integrity, follow through, um, ethically ambitious. Uh, also, appreciation. Mm. Appreciation. Women just like really like to be acknowledged and appreciated. And it's not going to kill you to say, wow, thank you. It's not going to kill you to recognize that someone did something for you and to say thank you. In the same hand, women can say, hey, thank you for doing what you did for working so hard. It, it goes back and forth. But, but yes, for men, it's, it's okay to acknowledge and appreciate your woman. Tell her she's beautiful. Tell her thank you and recognize what she has done to contribute to your life. And that one little thing is going to get you so much further ahead. Oh, yeah. Than just like, you know, being dumb, dumb. <laughs> Exactly. And telling a woman that she's beautiful goes a thousand miles. There's some people out there that are teaching men never to compliment a woman. And I'm like, that is actually the opposite. Like we work at what we are seeing. So you better compliment this. <laughs> there's, and, and I'm sorry, there's women out there telling guys not to compliment a woman. I am a, please, I do not put me in that category. No I'm chivalry. I love when a man holds a door open for me. Like, do I really think I'm weak enough that I can't open my own door? Like, do I really think guys think that? No. But when a guy is polite enough to think about opening a door for me or keeping it open for me every single time, I'm like, oh, thank you so much. Like, I'm sorry that whoever damaged men enough to get them so distorted or introverted on every single little action that they do for us because you know it's really sad you know it's just being yep well that's my mission Lena that is my mission to unravel that to bring out the true masculinity and men to really own it with integrity I like that you said integrity and follow through I talk about that a lot one thing I do though point out is like don't ever over compliment a woman where it's like you're getting too much right I always say compliment, but over complimenting in a way where it's like, and this is something totally different when it comes to dating, really, of being like in a realm of like, I want this girl so much, I'm just going to be so nice and compliment everything to do. It kind of gets old. So I think well, there's a lot of value in that. Mm -hmm. that's, um, that's actually a tone level called propitiation. Mm -hmm. Propitiation is when you're like trying to give gifts. Oh, oh, oh. And you do yes. it because you want to be liked and you're like, oh, 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 that's a very low tone level. So yeah. yeah, I agree with you. It has to, you know, be like a genuine, not like out of this desperate need to try to please in order to gain something, you know, women yeah. see that. it's, that's uh, 100%. Doing. We're very yeah. intuitive when it comes to that. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for being on this podcast, Elena. Um, I wanted to give our listeners and our viewers, because I'll put this on the YouTube channel too. I know you've mentioned a lot about that book. Maybe when it comes out, I think in the, at the end of the year and next year, where they can find it and also a little bit about your programs and things like that. And I'll also link it in the podcast description box and in the box below on the YouTube channel. Okay, so the mastermind that I'm doing where is just going to be an intimate group in Miami. Um, you can go to baymastermind.com. Bay stands for build an empire, baymastermind.com. If you want to do my course, which is a 75 segment course, I bring you through how to build an empire, how to expand, how to protect everything you need to know about the people in it. Uh, it's interactive, 75 segments, like I said, with a test out. You can go to elenacardone.com forward slash university. And if you just want to join my 10X Ladies group for free, go to 10xladies.com forward slash network. And every Wednesday I do a free Zoom call to all my 10X ladies out there. Yes, I'll be on there today. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Of course, of course. And when your new book comes out, if you guys want to follow her, definitely follow her on Instagram. She's very active on Instagram. And you'll know when that book comes out for you men that are ready to get in Elena. And also, too, for her current book that she has now, The Build the Empire, I would really recommend this to either men and women. It's for both people. Um, it's really also, too, Elena, what you do in this book, it really captivates the mind of a woman. I don't know, like, I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but, like, as I, I put myself, like, in a man's shoe, man shoes reading this. If he really read this, it really captivates the mind of a high-quality woman. And that's what a lot of men are searching for. So, thank you. Of course. Of course. Thank you for being on.